Until fairly recently, you'd have said a sight like this was unexpected. The fact is becoming increasingly familiar. A huge crowd of people queuing up to hear a radical politician from outside the political establishment. But I have to say, this is something else again. Look at the size of this line, as you call it in America. It starts all the way down there. It's all the way up there, it bends around, it goes all the way down there. Everybody's coming here, Bernie Sanders. We're at the Bernie rally. Uh, he's just talking about things that other politicians aren't talking about. Student loans, Black Lives Matter, all that type of stuff. I feel like Hillary represents the past and Bernie Sanders can represent the future. What's the title of that newspaper? Uh, Socialist Action. Don't they put you in prison for reading things like that in America? No, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't feel like a political meeting at all. It feels like gig. These people are what you call opinion formers. They're college students and graduates and they're going to be running the show in America. And they're sort of forming their political identity in front of your eyes, you know. This won't go away depending on what happens in this election. 20% of our kids living in poverty in inner cities. The number is much higher. What this campaign is about, standing up and fighting for social, racial, economic justice. is in full effect and it's impressive it's moving but this primary race isn't going to be decided in rooms like this the future of america isn't going to be decided in rooms like this that's going to happen in an atmosphere that's slightly different we're now on our way to baltimore which in many ways is a case study of a lot of what bernie sanders talks about poverty inequality the perpetually marginalized place of millions of black people in america All that was dramatised pretty much a year ago, when a 25-year-old man called Freddie Gray suffered injuries while in police custody, fell into a coma and later died. That sparked what a lot of people here call an uprising, and its effects are lingering on. Tomorrow, make sure that not just do we stand up, but we go out and vote. Are you going to stand up tomorrow, Baltimore? Kwame Rose is an activist with Black Lives Matter, one of the movements Bernie Sanders has courted in his attempt to win around black voters in cities like Baltimore. How do you think Freddie Gray and Black Lives Matter has changed politics? In Baltimore. Right now you have an unprecedented amount of young people, in particular young black uh, citizens who have never voted, who are now uh, actively aware uh, that there is something wrong and that we have the power to do something about it by electing officials who truly represent the community. I think that now you have a consciousness uh, amongst a group of Freddie Grays who now have a chance to join a revolution that may change their lives. And yet the impression remains that by and large, black voters are remaining loyal to the Clintons. Well, you know, uh, I think that's what, you have young people in this city uh, who aren't loyal to the Clintons because their parents were locked up by the 1994 crime bill. Uh, their parents were attacked with the war on drugs, with welfare reform. Their parents, you know, these are the victims of the Clinton administration. This, this is a new generation. Bernie Sanders is now going to be the first person I've ever voted for in my life. So did you have the vote at the last general election? I, I, I could have voted and I didn't because I wasn't inspired. Didn't feel as though I was being engaged. You didn't vote for Obama rather than Mitt Romney last no, time? No, I didn't vote. It's primary day, and I'm out and about with a non-partisan community organization called Bill, who are trying to increase voter turnout. This is quite remarkable. I would say a, probably a, a third of the houses here are boarded up, right? Yeah. And these people are knocking on the occupied houses, where you think there's people? Mm -hmm. if, when we know that there are people there, we're telling them to get out and vote. And if they haven't, we try to talk them into it and then get them to the polls right away. Oh, you can't tell nobody who you vote for, that's right. <laughs> You gotta keep it a secret. <laughs> who do you think you're gonna vote for? Clinton. You're gonna vote Clinton? Do you know who you're gonna vote for? Hillary. Okay, tell me why. I love her. You love Hillary? Okay. Just under 12 hours ago, I was in a hall in Philadelphia full of absolutely hysterical Bernie Sanders supporters, and I haven't really? met a single person yet in this neighborhood <laughs> of those who are voting is voting for Bernie Sanders. These are all so far Clinton people. Um, the polls are showing that she should win here, but. I just believe that she's had so much experience within the White House. She's been in there for so many years. She was Secretary of State. I think she's doing her job very well, honestly. Do you think in voting for Clinton, somehow that might feed through a help in the community like this? Personally, no. I don't believe it. I've seen so many great presidents come through and I've seen Obama come through. Our community hasn't changed yet. This house just collapsed. How long ago? Just like a week or so ago, right? Yeah. It just fell in. It just fell in. You know what kind of 
amazes me mm -hmm. that we're an hour from Washington DC, mm -hmm. the White House, the seat of power. Mm -hmm. We're in a matter of a couple of hours drive from Wall Street, mm -hmm. right? And people's houses are falling down. Right. There. And that's almost normal here. I mean, it's like people don't even see it anymore. They do, but they don't expect anything to happen. So we really need to increase the turnout here so we can get the attention, so we can begin to change some things in these neighborhoods. Because if you don't vote still, I mean, you really, really, really don't count. I can get you, I can get you a thousand people right now. Right uh, now. All we gotta do is walk to that corner right there. Get a thousand people to yeah, come vote. Yeah, to come vote, they're serious, but I'm telling you, a lot of us young black people feel as though it's our vote don't count. The government ain't built for us. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna go sit and fuss and fight with a bunch of old people that don't have my best interests at heart. I just hope everybody that was born in the 60s and 70s are gone or died off because that is who's running the world right now. It's time that y'all start letting these 90s kids get out there and show y'all what they, what they worth. See, maybe because of the way I dress, people think I'm just some dumb young black nigga from Division and Bloom. But I'm not. I'm one of the smartest niggas Division and Bloom ever produced. It's just that I don't have the means and the ways to produce my visions that I see. Can I ask you a question you might think sounds sort of stupidly naive? You've had a black president here for eight years, right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that man. I'm bagging up. Okay, all right, all right, look. I, I like Barack. Sometimes when I sit down and I watch him on TV, he talks some good stuff. He even shows those specks of blackness in him. But when somebody got you by your collar for 377 days out of a year, I know I added some days on it, you know what I'm saying? I'm just being <laughs> sarcastic. But when you, when you got somebody got you by your neck and you can't do nothing, what can you do? Self-evidently, a lot of things have gone wrong here, a lot of things need to be put right, but we shouldn't take that to some sort of crazy extreme. Most people we've spoken to are politically engaged. A lot of them have a sort of underlying sense of hope. It's a little bit different from a lot of deprived in quote mark places I've been to the UK. Insofar as I'm quite used to places that feel like they've had the stuffing kicked out of them. But a lot of the most hard-pressed parts of Baltimore don't feel like that. There's a kind of energy here, there's stuff going on. Looking for the Freddie Gray Empowerment Centre, named after the man who died as a result of injuries he received in police custody. Freddie Gray Empowerment Centre is now the local campaign HQ of Bernie Sanders. The uh, revolution is not a spectator sport. We need everybody involved, especially now. So we're really asking you to distribute some information in your area and just encourage them to actually make it to the polls. If you're out there and you're talking to someone and they ask, why should I vote for Bernie? You could tell them your own personal issues, why you're doing what you're doing for Bernie and why you're going to vote for Bernie. A lot, if not most of these people are rookies. I mean, they're getting sort of tutored in the, in the basics of canvassing and campaigning. I get the sense because they've never done this before. Change has arrived! Outside, the political battle is raging not just in the presidential primary, but for keenly fought mayoral and congressional races. If you don't change, you beg for change. You got a mother and daughter here. You voted Clinton and you voted for Sanders. Yeah. We're very much aware of her flaws, but uh, there comes a point where you just have to stand for change. Hillary Clinton is going to crack that glass ceiling. So that kind of legacy of the Clintons and all that means much less to you than it does to your mom. Yeah, because I guess because my thing is, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, Bill Clinton was the first black president. I kind of no, take a wasn't. People say that. People say that because Crazy he said he smoked weed. That. That to that me is a little bit offensive. No, it doesn't, that's but that's offensive. what people said at the time. That's what people were saying. So why did you, you vote know, for Sanders? Uh, I guess because I believe him more. I believe uh, his history more. He's more passionate. Whereas Hillary, you see throughout her history, she's flip-flopped a lot. And yet for Sanders and his movement, it's clear that his political revolution has a way to go to fully break through with the people and places who they say have the most to gain from that revolution. Yeah, we were at a rally in Philadelphia yesterday full of, full of young Bernie Sanders supporters saying he's the revolution, mm -hmm. he's, he's in with Black Lives Matter, he understands the predicament of communities like this. What, what would you say to them, people who say that the only option is, is Bernie Sanders? I would say you all fools. <laughs> Of fools because he's not the only option. The other option is Donald Trump. Now, do we really want that? Uh, on the Democratic side, we have a projection as well. CNN projects Hillary Clinton is the winner in Maryland. She wins the Maryland Democratic presidential primary. Be easy from the outside to look at a city like Baltimore 
I wonder why more people weren't voting for Bernie Sanders. One of the things we picked up there, though, was that black voters in particular support Hillary Clinton because she speaks of a certain safety experience. Also, she represents the best chance of stopping the Republicans winning. And this year, the Republicans winning is a particularly frightening prospect for a lot of people as it centers on the man we're going to see next, Donald Trump. Excuse me being blunt, but this is the sort of bollocks you get in the new economy. White collar factory, what's that mean? Urban campus, a flexible workspace. It's like magnetic poetry. God knows what that is. All of JG Ballard's nightmares brought to life.